Hello drummers and other creatures. In this video, we're going to take a look at a little bit of a foot and hand coordination workout. A little bit of a, a technical video, shall we say. We're gonna take the famous Brazilian samba ostinato, which mean, just means foot pattern, basically. Uh, we're gonna take that samba, sort of cliched, old fashioned foot pattern, and we're going to do some coordination exercises using first the one hand and then the other, right? First the right hand in my case, and then the left. Each one individually. And it, this will allow us to start working on some coordination, developing ideas using this samba foot pattern. Uh, now, oh, maybe you don't want to play samba, you're not interested in Brazilian music. Yeah, you should be. Have a listen to Brazilian music, some of the best music ever. And some of the greatest, really greatest drummers are from Brazil. But um, even if you're not interested in Brazilian music, this pattern is really good. It helps you to d develop your facility in using the bass drum. Uh, and it's, it's a really fun, nice feeling thing to work on. So even though we're, we're doing a little bit of a technical exercise, we can work it up to, to feeling quite musical. But primarily we're looking at some sort of coordination working on the, the, I don't know, the mechanics of the thing, right? It's not primarily musical, but let's see if we can make it a little bit more musical. Now, we're going to be counting in sixteenths, but I, I'm going to use the Takadimi syllables. So if we think about, we've got sort of groups of four sixteenths, and maybe we're thinking about a sort of two four or four four feel, depending on how you want to look at it, really. But we're going to be counting in groups of one e an, a two e an, a one e an, a two e an, a that's two four, and uh, I'm going to play the the bass drum on the number and the uh, right? So the bass drum pattern goes one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a. That was four four, right? Or one e and a, two e and a, one e and a, two e and a. In takadimi, which is just some syllables we nicked from the Indians, right? In India they have a conical rhythm language and. Um, I've just nicked those syllables because they, they feel musical and nice to use, but I don't know anything much about conical, just for the record. But um, we're going to say taka dimi, taka dimi, taka dimi, taka dimi. The bass drum goes on the ta and the mi. Something like this. And we don't want the hi hat foot to get bored, and it's going to be playing on the D, right? Taka dimi, taka dimi, taka dimi, taka dimi. If we play and, or if we count sixteenths, it would be on the ands. One e ana, two e ana, three e ana, four e ana. All together. Now, with my feet, I usually like playing that heel up. Sometimes I feel a bit tired and then I'll leave my left heel down and just use the front of my foot to play the hi-hat. But, uh, you know, if you're feeling okay and reasonably well balanced, I think you could get a nice clean hi-hat sound by keeping the heel up. But it's really up to you what you're comfortable with uh, for that. Again, uh, right foot, I, I think heel up by and large is a good thing to, to do. But as with all things, try and see what works for you, what you feel comfortable with and what gives you the best result. There's not an absolute right or wrong way to do anything at all in this life. So here we go. Now just focusing on this foot pattern is a really good way of giving your bass drum foot a workout. You can build up some speed. And that might, you know, sort of be useful for developing the, the kind of you know, muscular confidence and getting everything moving nicely. So stuff like that will be helped here. Now, what are we going to do with the hands? We're thinking in takadimis. Takadimi, 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 takadimi. And if we think of those four syllables as being a sound you can play or not play, right? If I, if I play the, the first sound, I'd be going ta, 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 ta. Yeah? If, I, if I just play the second sound, ka, 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 ka.
car. Uh, maybe I'll play the first and third sounds, the ta and the di. Ta, di, ta, di, okay? We've got a little counting system, and we're going to work through a few different combinations. Altogether, there are 16 options of all four syllables voiced, all four syllables silence, and everything in between. Yeah, we, hopefully this will make sense as I demonstrate it. But we're going to work through one hand at a time. So the first thing is we're going to play the foot pattern and we're going to count a little bit and that'll be taka dimi with zero of those uh, sounds being voiced, right? So I'm going... And you sit and do that for a little bit. The next thing we're going to do is just play the ta with the right hand. I'm going to keep counting. You don't have to count all the time, but to try and orient yourself to the, uh, the rhythm of the thing is a good idea to count. So I'm just going to play the ta's on the snare. Next, the ka. Okay, D. And finally, the me. Ooh, that was a bit wonky. I'm going to do the same thing again with my left hand. And this time I'll just try and play four of each and move straight through so I don't bore you to tears. And there we go. We, we can sit and work through and get ourselves really, really comfortable with each one of those. Because each, each stroke that you play, right hand and then left hand, has its own set of coordination stuff that you can let your little brain, you know, work on tying together all the, the complicated little wirings that it needs to get your hands and feet to work nicely together, okay? Is that, that's not very scientific sounding, is it? But I, I think that's what happens, right? When you do actions, your brain starts to construct the wiring that it needs to be able to do those actions comfortably, and, and that opens up the possibility of then having access to those things in a, in a free way when you're improvising and so on. Okay, so those were the kind of options of just like one stroke on its own. Uh, a next good one would be to look at like two strokes with a gap, so the obvious thing would be to play the ta and the d, right? Ta, d, ta, d, ta, d, ta, d. Okay, taka dimi, taka dimi, taka dimi, taka dimi. And we'll do that with the right hand and the left hand. After that, we'll play the ka and the mi. Taka dimi, taka dimi, taka dimi, taka dimi. This is very buzzy, isn't it? This is my, my calfskin kit, which kind of does what it likes, really. It's not really concerned about what I want it to sound like. Uh, it responds to the humidity, which is going up and down all the time now. So, well, anyway, so where were we? Taka dimi, taka dimi, taka dimi, taka dimi, right? And then taka dimi, taka dimi, taka dimi, taka dimi. Let's see how that goes. We'll do some on the right, some on the left. And so on. Now we could also do two adjacent ones. So starting with taka dimi, taka dimi, taka dimi, taka dimi. Then we've got taka dimi, taka dimi, taka dimi, taka dimi. Then we've got taka dimi, taka dimi, taka dimi, taka dimi. And then we've got taka dimi, taka dimi, taka dimi, taka dimi. Okay, that's 
four of those patterns with two adjacent, two adjacent, ugh, what's happened to my tongue today? Two adjacent sixteenths. So here we go, we're gonna do right hand. I'm just gonna jump in and do four of each there. Hopefully you've got the idea with this, right? Okay, now, as long as you understand the concept of this, if you've never played this before, I'm not expecting you to just zoom through each one of those patterns straight away. You might want to sit with each one and take your time. Spend all afternoon on one or two patterns, if you like. There's, there's no rush. Obviously, I'm trying to chuck an idea at you with, you know, within 15, 20 minutes, hopefully, if I don't go on for too long. Uh -huh. Um, but I'm demonstrating these things. You can pick just one pattern and just sit with it, right? Now, once you've got the hang of a few patterns, you can then, uh, you know, establish that you can move between the right and left hand reasonably comfortably, uh, and then you can start moving around the kit. At first, stay on the snare. You don't want your poor brain trying to negotiate the basic coordination and then moving around the drums at the same time. But when you get that little sort of relaxed feeling, when you start feeling more familiar with a particular pattern, you can try and move it around the drums. So if I go, it, just go for the tucker, tucker option, right? I'll play it a few times uh, with the right hand and move around the kit, and I'll play it a few times with the left hand, just so you get the idea, right? And you can do this with any of the patterns. Here we go. the drums even if you're feeling very energetic. Left hand. You can use the symbol. Okay, we're we making sense. So we went through those things. Now, uh, if I didn't, I can't remember if I said now, but I'll, I'll put a, a little list of the, the various Takadimi combinations that you can play and uh, put them in the, the description below so you can have a look and sort of work out which patterns you want to do. You don't have to do it all using your mind, right? And I might not cover all 16 of the possibilities in this because I'm, I'm, I'm riffing it, right? Anyway. Next, let's do combinations of three notes. So I'm going to go taka di, taka di, taka di, taka di. That's the first one. Then I'm going to go, um, what do we have next? Oh, taka, mi taka, mi taka, mi taka, mi. Right, we're leaving out the D. Then we're leaving out the ka. Taka di, mi taka di, mi taka di, mi taka di, mi. And then we've got the ta di, mi taka di, mi taka di, mi taka di, mi. Okay, I'm hanging in there. So we've got, let's go, let's just go and play it. slipped up a little bit there and, and I seem to have done eight of each maybe I, I just feel like I want to settle in to each one a little bit more now that's quite handy isn't it because you're going to want to learn how to play different broken 16th patterns on the hi-hat and an exercise like this can really help you develop some of the coordination you need for that and when you're just sort of playing on the snare and doing a foot pattern like this 
you can listen carefully and uh, you know just notice what combinations of things aren't all that agreeable and what is and you don't have to make a big hoo-ha about it or you know write it all down and write, oh these are the ones I'm good at and these are the ones I'm bad at a lot of the time just a little bit of awareness allows your brain to sort of process things and you know you find that things naturally can improve on their own but maybe you're like a spreadsheet type of person and you want to write down and keep track of everything that's also cool lots of ways to get to where you want to go all right left hand three adjacent notes still following am i still making i'm hopefully making a bit of sense okay i'm running for all these remember don't you, you you may be not not able to play these straight away don't worry you just take one of these and work it out right let's take um i don't know it's very brazilian taka me right taka me taka me taka me taka me and you want to play that but you don't have the coordination in place yet to do that the yet is the most important word when you're practicing your instrument. So you could slow the thing really down. You could just play it really slow. Play it on the snare. Taka mi, right? Get a bit of a feeling for that, right? Uh, get the bass drum and the hi-hat going. Very, very slowly. I'm, I'm running through it quickly. Again, as I said, I don't want the video to be too long. Does it need to be slower even? That's fine. Break it down, see if you can tease out. Maybe, it's a tricky pattern. Maybe you're just gonna play the taka to start with and then add the me. Doesn't matter how long it takes, doesn't matter how slowly you need to do it. Pick one or two of them and work them out it'll start to sort of coagulate and get a little bit easier the more time you put in. Now, once you're feeling comfortable, and I encourage you to sort of, as you practice things, learn to notice when you're, you're there's, a, there's a point I find with most people that you're struggling with something, you're challenged and perplexed by a pattern, and, and you feel like you're doing battle with your body and trying to concentrate and focus on a thing. It doesn't come out right and you have to concentrate real hard. But there's a moment where your whole body just whew, feels a little relaxation and that's usually the beginning of the process of really getting something. So when you start feeling like that, if that, you know, if that resonates with you, um, then maybe try a little bit moving around the kit, right? So we'll take that same pattern, taka, ni taka, me taka, me taka, me. And this time, ooh, fly. Um, this time we'll move that around the kit a little bit, right?
up to speed. Each hand on its own, nice and patiently. I'll, I'll probably do a couple of other videos and show you how we start bringing a working out between the two hands. But for now, one hand at a time, it's a nice exercise. Don't want to do it, don't have to do it. It's just a little fun thing. I can sit and do this all day. But once you've got the hang of those, once you've worked out as many of those 16th note combinations against the bass and hi-hat, one hand at a time, the important thing is to improvise. And don't, don't try and get everything perfect before you improvise. Even the first time you practice this, even if you're just playing the single individual notes, the ta, the ka, the di, and the mi separately, you can start improvising with that already, right? Let's have a go with that. Little bit of right, little bit of left. so on. Then move on to the two, then move on to the threes, and then play them all. Let's, I'm going to have a mess around with this now just a little bit to show you what we can do. There you go. It's, uh, I don't know, I like that. I, I, could, I could go on all day like that, but you'd get bored if I made you watch it, right? Have a go with it. See what happens. Let me know what you think. Meanwhile, thank you very, very much for watching this video. Uh, I would love to get some feedback uh, and, and hear whether that was interesting for you, how you got on with it, and so on and so forth, and would you like to see more of this stuff? I might, I might I might make it anyway, even if you don't want to see more of it. Who knows? Because, you know, you've got to keep churning this stuff out. But there we have it. Let me know what you thought. And, ah, don't forget to like, like the video, subscribe to my channel, which is really cool, and uh, be aware of the fact that I'm, I'm a drum teacher and I live in northwest London, but I'm available on the internet. So if you think there's anything I could do to help you with your drumming, get in touch with me and we can have a lesson um, can't guarantee it, but I'm pretty sure I can help you resolve some issues that you have with your drumming if you're trying to move forward and you lack a little bit of help or advice. It's easygoing and fun having having lessons, I think. Anyway, but, you know, obviously I'm selling. I'm the seller, aren't I? So I'm not going to tell you it's... it's uh... <laughs> anyway, right. Time for me to shut up and you can go off and practice. <laughs>